comes to mind when you think about taking action for social issues? I think a lot of you would think about protests or speeches in public. And some characteristics that many of you will think about will be um, good at communicating, or loud, or outspoken, or um, extroverted, probably one of the main ones that you'll think about. But you think everyone who does action to make a difference in the world is like that? Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not true. And from first-hand experience, I can say that I am extremely terrified right now because one of my biggest fears is public speaking. And when I was um, told to identify my job title for this event, I wrote activist. And none of the characteristics that I mentioned before about good at communicating or loud or outspoken, none of these characteristics describe who I am. But the reason why that I can say that I'm an activist is because I know that the actions that I take that are not public speaking have an equal impact on the world as if I did public speaking. And of course, being good at communicating or being good at um, being loud or outspoken are good characteristics, but at the same time, this is not necessary at all. And in my presentation, I would like to talk about how taking action is not always about public speaking and how you don't have to do public speaking in order to speak up about social issues that you care about. I think when everyone thinks about activists, I think everyone will think about activists who are in the public eye. For example, Greta, who, talk, who uses speech and protest to raise awareness about climate change. Or Malala, who um, speaks up and does many amazing speeches about girls' education. And we cannot deny the fact that they have a really huge influence on the world and have huge impact on the world. But do you ever think about the activists who are behind the scenes, who do not use their voice, like their like words, to raise awareness about social issues? In 2018, I started to be more interested in social issues, and I started to work in many organizations. And back then, I was very insecure. And I was very, um, I felt extremely useless because all of my attention went to all the activists who were able to use public, public speaking as their way of communicating to other people and communicating what they care about. And I was not able to do that and I'm still not able to do that to this day. But in one of the events that my organization was speaking at, which was a university lecture, um, one of the members introduced me as, Hi, this is Mayu. She is a photographer and she uses visual arts in order for her to speak up about social issues and raise awareness about it. And if you have any questions, please come ask her. And that is when I realized that that can be my title. That can be what I explain myself to, to other people. I'm the photographer and I want to capture things that are happening around the world and speak up through my photos. And, and as you can imagine, no one really came to me with any questions at that event, and all the questions went to the main speaker. And it's probably because I, mm, many people were very shy, like I am, or um, I looked scary because I admit that my camera is really big and with the lens, I think I look very intimidating. And so I think that Many people thought I looked scary, but as I continued my activism through my photos, I got many questions. And one of the questions that I usually get is, why don't you talk at events? Or why don't you talk at um, lectures at universities like uh, the other members of your organization does? And the second question is, how do you do it? How, how did you get into your photography? And for the first question, I think in the introduction I mentioned that I'm very scared of public speaking, so that answers that question. But the second question of how do you do it and how I got into it, I want to make sure that I give an answer that is helpful for the person who is asking the question. And so my answer for that question is that 
I think that photos and images speak better than spoken words. And for, uh, the reason for that is because for spoken words, you are listening and you accept the information that is coming in. But for photos, you, you need to be the one to decide what is on that photo. And you are the one who is interpreting it. And it will make you think. And it will lead to you learning new things. And those are the, those are the answers that I give them. And fast forward to 2020, I started to become more of a leader position in many organizations, in two organizations. And when I interview many new members, I ask them, what are you good at? What are you passionate about? What do you want to do? And the reason I ask that is because I think everyone has an individuality that and has a creative mind that they can bring to the team and I value that because the team that I was in valued that of me and I, no one forced me to do anything that I was not comfortable doing. And as you can imagine, organizations are a lot like companies. Some people do the public speaking and some people do the finance or social media. And even though it looks like the people who are in the spotlight, who are doing the public speaking, are the most active, that is not true. I mean, it might be true for some, but it's not true for many because the people behind the scenes work equally as hard and they have an important role. And when I talk about um, taking action against social issues, I do mention a lot about education because taking action is very educational and we need to learn every single day. We need to input information from social medias, from the news, from articles. And even though input is extremely important, one of the most important things is how you output it. How do you want to output the, and deliver your message and who is your audience? And the same, as same as school, 65% um, of people learn visually and 30% of people learn by listening and 5% learn by doing and everyone has a very different learning style and so there always needs to be an activist or a leader who who fits into those criteria and fits into what is expected from the education that you are giving and everyone has different ways to input their information and they probably will have a different way of outputting their information as well. But how do you find the action that you want to take? How do you find the action that you want to take in order to educate other people is probably one of the main questions. And as I was writing this speech, I was talking to um, the other co-president of Girl Up Tokyo, I think she's in the audience somewhere, um, and we thought about three questions that we can ask ourselves when we are looking for the action that we want to take. The first one is what do you care about and what is the issue that you want to tackle? I'm assuming that if you want to take action, that means you have an issue that you care about. And make sure you have a specific issue and make sure you know like, what specific thing that you want to focus on before you start your action. And the second question is, what is your passion? What are you good at? And what do you like to do? And the reason why this is a really important question to ask yourself is because activism can be very hard. Taking action can be extremely difficult. And it, it's, this is only my opinion, but it's really important for everyone to be able to enjoy what they are doing. And the third question is, how can I connect those two in order to make my action more productive? And this is a really hard question to ask because many actions or many passions that you have might not directly connect to the action that you are going to take in order to uh, take action toward solving the social issue. And we came up with two main points that you guys can focus on, or two main key strategies. And first one is build connections. Build connections with your friends, families, teachers, because they might connect you to new people. They might connect you to new opportunities or experiences. 
And the other, other group of people that you can connect to is, is in, influencers and people who are on the social media. Don't be scared to message them because they, from, from my experience, they are all very nice. And I think the reason for that is because when someone is talking about social issues on social media, they want to start a conversation and they want you to be more aware of this topic. And so if you go to them with a question, that means they were able to raise awareness and connect to you. And so they will answer any questions that you have. The second step is to identify your style and your level of involvement. Do you want to be in an already established organization or do you want to start something new? Because maybe starting something new suits you more. An example of this is what in one of the organizations that I lead, um, one of, someone came to apply for a position and when I replied to her email saying like, hi, we want to interview you and when do you want to come and talk to us? And she, she apologized saying, oh, I want to cancel my application and I want to do something by myself and I want to start something new. And first I was extremely confused and shocked because she is very talented and she would have brought so much to the team. But at the same time, I didn't want her to apologize. I told her this, I don't want you to apologize and I'm glad that you were able to find something that you care about enough to start your own action. And I don't want to be, or the organization itself doesn't want to be in the position to limit your potential. And so, like her, um, you might try to get into an organization but choose not to and start your own action. And I think many people will go through that as well. And if she can do it, probably everyone can do it as well. Um, and also, when it comes to joining an organization or starting something new, there are pros and cons. The pro of going into an organization that's already established is that there is already a foundation. There's already a system that the organization follows. And so what you have to do is go with the rules and adjust, what, adjust your actions in order for you to be in the organization and make an impact there. And the con of it is that you probably will not have much freedom to do what you want to do in the organization because there is already a foundation and you need to stick with that and you won't have the freedom to be creative. And on the other hand, if you want to start something new, you do have the freedom to do what you want to do and to be as creative as much as you want. But the con, I would say it's a con, but I think it's a challenge. Um, is that you will have to be responsible for everything that comes to you and you will have to be the one to face all the challenges because you have to build the foundation of the organization or whatever action you are taking. And I believe that there is no one correct way of taking action. And so stay creative and innovative because you do not have any limits. If you if you already started, go from there and um, create new goals every single time. It might be scary and you might get judged, uh, but that comes with raising awareness and raising your voice to um, hope for change in the society. And incorporate what you're good at. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, you don't have to do it. Um, I would like to end with my speech with one thing that might be a bit ironic because my speech was mostly about how you don't have to do something that you don't feel comfortable doing but if you feel like doing it maybe you should do it it took me four days to reply to do this speech today and the reason why i said yes to the speech even though i am shaking and i forgot most of my lines is that i felt responsible. Um, my courage came from responsibility and I talked about how I did not speak at events in the past and I have been taking action for four years now 
And this is the biggest stage that I've stood on. And I know that what I'm doing right now goes against what I just spoke about. But when I answered this email, in the back of my head, I was thinking, I'll need to do something like this someday. And if I have to do it, I probably should do it now. And so one day, maybe you'll feel the need to go out of your comfort zone to do something that you are not good at or something that you are not comfortable doing. But if you have that little courage to do it, then that's probably when you need to take the first step. Thank you.